Hi everyone, it's Maya from wholesomeyum.com and today I'm showing you how to pan sear salmon. This recipe is actually very easy, but if you want it flaky and buttery and just absolutely delicious, and you do, I'm gonna show you all my tricks to do just that. So I used to think that baking was my favorite way to make salmon and I still love it, but I think this pan seared salmon recipe might be my new absolute favorite. The crispy skin is amazing. And even if you're not a fan of the skin, you're still gonna love this. It forms this beautiful golden crust on top. It's delicious. And the inside is tender and flaky and juicy. It's everything salmon should be. Okay, last thing. Can we just talk about this lemon butter sauce for a second? This is so good. If you're pan frying salmon, this is the only way I ever do it anymore because it makes it so much better. You've got the butter, you've got lemon juice in there, you've got fresh herbs and garlic. It's just perfection. You have to drizzle this on your salmon. Okay, I'm gonna show you exactly how to make this recipe. Let's do this. Make sure you prepare all of your seared salmon ingredients before you start. This recipe cooks really quickly, so if you don't have everything ready ahead of time, your fish is going to overcook, and nobody wants that. Let's talk about the salmon fillets. You have a few different choices. This recipe actually works with any kind of salmon, but I do have some preferences if you really want it to be buttery, flaky, all that good stuff. So I'm using pink salmon here. The best of the best is gonna be king salmon, but it's a little pricey, so up to you if you wanna splurge on that or not. Coho salmon is also great as well. Now, you can buy salmon with or without the skin. I highly recommend salmon with the skin. There's a few reasons for that. So the skin is gonna protect the delicate flesh while you're cooking it so that it doesn't dry out. It's also gonna get nice and crispy, but if crispy skin isn't for you, totally fine. You can remove the skin after you cook the salmon. The other thing that the skin does is make it easier to flip the salmon. You're gonna thank me for that when you're cooking this. But all that being said, if the only salmon you can find or have is without the skin, this recipe will still work. The other thing you're gonna watch for is the thickness of the salmon. That's about one inch thick is ideal. It's gonna cook more evenly, and if you can find it, it's not always easy. Mine is not ideal here. Try to look for an even thickness all along the width of the salmon. That way it's gonna cook evenly on the wide end and on the narrow end. Because we want this to be an easy pan seared salmon, we don't want any nightmares flipping and having the fish all falling apart on us, we're gonna cook this as individual fillets. Trust me, you don't wanna be flipping a big giant filet of salmon. It's gonna be really difficult. If you get a larger piece, simply cut it into these thinner strips. These are about five to six ounces. It'll vary depending on how thick the salmon is, but that's the general guideline. You want them to be this shape, this size. It's really gonna help you with flipping and it's gonna cook more evenly as well. The other two things to watch for is fresh versus frozen fish and wild caught versus farmed. So most fish in most areas of the US will come frozen in, and then sometimes they'll thaw it at the store. That's totally fine. We live in Minnesota here, so fresh fish here is pretty, pretty hard to find, but get what you can. If you're lucky enough to live on the coast, try to get that fresh fish. It's that much better. And I always recommend wild caught fish, not just for the nutritional reasons, but I think it also tastes better. But from a recipe standpoint, either way will work. So if farmed is what you can get, that's totally fine. Phew. That was a lot to go over. Let's make some pan seared salmon. The first thing we're gonna do to make this recipe is make garlic herb butter. So we're gonna chop up some herbs. I'm gonna start with fresh dill and then I'm gonna do the same thing with parsley. You're gonna need about a tablespoon of each, but chop a little extra because later in this video, I'm gonna show you a delicious side dish that's gonna use the same herbs. I'm gonna grab a little parsley and chop that up as well. My go-to is curly parsley. That's just usually what I buy. But if you have flat leaf parsley, that will work great as well. We're gonna chop this up nice and fine, about the same size as the dill. Now, depending on the time of year, feel free to also use other herbs if you like. During the fall or winter months, you can use fresh thyme or fresh rosemary. All of it will be delicious. But either way, once you're done, you'll need about a tablespoon of each of two different types of herbs using fresh dill and parsley here. I'm gonna measure those out and add those to a bowl. 
with butter. We're gonna need six tablespoons of butter. Make sure your butter is at room temperature. We want it nice and soft because we're going to mash that later. And we're using salted butter here. If yours is unsalted, that's perfectly fine. You'll just need to add a little salt. The conversion is a quarter teaspoon of salt per stick of unsalted butter. This recipe uses six tablespoons, which is the quarter stick of butter. So you'd add a little bit less than a quarter teaspoon of salt to make it the same level of saltiness. Next, we're going to add some lemon juice to our herb butter. I highly recommend using fresh lemon for this. Jarred lemon juice just does not have the same flavor, plus fresh will mix in a little better. So I like to squeeze that right into a little measuring spoon and add that to the bowl. You need a tablespoon and a half of lemon juice, so I'm using this measuring spoon that's half a tablespoon and I'm gonna fill it three times. Next, we're going to add four cloves of minced garlic. Now again, just like the lemon juice, fresh garlic is best, but I'm all about convenience and here I find it makes less of a difference, so I'm using minced garlic from a jar. Grab a fork and mash together the garlic herb butter. My bowl is a little small here, so I'm going really slowly. If your bowl is bigger, it will be easier, so I do recommend a slightly bigger bowl than this. We're gonna save this garlic herb butter until later in the recipe, but we do want it ready ahead of time. You might notice that the lemon juice doesn't fully incorporate into the butter, that's okay. Just do the best you can. The butter is going to all melt in the pan later anyway. Now we're going to season our salmon. It's really important to pat the salmon dry before you season it and it's important that you do this right before you cook the salmon. If you dry the salmon and then season it with salt and pepper and then it sits for a while, it's going to start releasing moisture again and we don't want that. Really dry salmon is what's gonna get us that nice crust, so this is a critical step. We're gonna season our salmon with salt and pepper. I like to use fresh cracked salt and pepper. I find it, it's easier to distribute, it tastes better to me, but if you wanna be precise, the amount you need is one teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. Now, this is the amount for sea salt, so if you're using table salt, it's going to be different. I use sea salt in all my recipes and highly recommend it. And these are the amounts you need for the salmon on both sides, so just plan accordingly. I'm gonna flip this over and season it on the other side. We're gonna season the skin as well. Just make sure that there's no scales left. Once your salmon is seasoned, you're going to want to cook it right away so that it gets a nice sear. I'm going to preheat a pan first, and I'm going to add a tablespoon of olive oil. Ideally, you'll use light olive oil, not extra virgin, because we're using a high cooking temperature here. We do want this to preheat first, so you may even want to preheat the pan before you pat dry and season the salmon. You'll know it's hot enough by sprinkling a little bit of water onto the pan. If it sizzles, it's good to go. Add the salmon to the pan in a single layer and you're going to want to place it skin side down. And as soon as you place it on there, try to do this as quickly as you can, use a fish spatula or any spatula will work, but I like the fish spatula because it's nice and large and long and it makes it easier to flip the salmon later. Use the fish spatula to press on top of the salmon for about 10 seconds or sometimes five seconds is fine too. This is going to prevent curling and it's going to give the skin that nice sear. We're going to keep cooking the salmon skin side down until it's almost done. We're not gonna flip halfway through. We're going to let it cook until most of the salmon is actually opaque and looks like it's almost done. Just the top is the part that's gonna not be done yet. This is going to make the salmon easy to flip it's going to make the skin nice and crispy. It's the best way to pan fry salmon. Once the salmon looks almost done, all except for the top, use the fish spatula to carefully flip it. Now, as soon as we flip it over, and this is why we want all our ingredients ready ahead of time, you're going to add the garlic butter to the pan. We're not gonna add it directly on top of the salmon, but rather add it around the salmon, and it's going to melt pretty quickly. Let it melt. You can baste the salmon a little bit with the garlic butter if you like, but it's not absolutely necessary. We're gonna use this garlic butter sauce for drizzling onto the salmon after it's done. If you get some on top of the skin, just kind of move it out of the way so that it starts to melt and it's directly touching the pan. 
Now you can see the salmon skin has this really nice beautiful sear. The way we did this is we didn't move the fish around as it cooked. So make sure you keep it all in one spot and just flip it once. The best way to know that salmon is done is to use a meat thermometer. You're gonna want somewhere between 125 and 140 degrees depending on if you want medium rare all the way up to medium well. Keep in mind the salmon temperature will increase a little bit after cooking so just plan accordingly but once it reaches that internal temperature you're going to want to remove it from the pan right away to prevent overcooking. Overall the total time for pan searing the salmon is going to be five to six minutes with the skin side down followed by one to two minutes with the skin side up. I'm going to serve my pan fried salmon with my favorite tomato cucumber avocado salad. The salad actually uses a lot of the same ingredients, the same fresh herbs, the lemon juice. So it's just a perfect pairing. You probably have a lot of these ingredients already. They go really well together. I'm gonna give my salmon a fresh drizzle of the lemon butter sauce right before I serve it. All right. Let's try this. I'm so excited. And some salad. This is gonna be so good. Perfection. I hope all these tricks were helpful. I hope you're gonna make this salmon recipe soon. I think you're really gonna love it. If you do, be sure to leave me a comment. I love, love hearing from you guys. Love hearing what you think. And snap a photo as well. Post it with hashtag wholesome yum so that I can see it too. See you next time on Wholesome Yum where I share easy, healthy, and keto recipes all with 10 ingredients or less.